Hello, Lara. Hello, Tom. Good morning. Thanks again for those hats, Tom. I wear mine with pride. <laughs> I think you got some of the last ones because there weren't too many left. Yeah, yeah. Any chance of making more of those? They're pretty cool. Uh, well, we we got less than half what we requested for our SLF budget, so. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Things are a little tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's understandable. But some of that was marked for you know earmarked for outreach, so. Maybe there is money for it. I haven't talked to Ethan about it in a while, but yeah. uh, All right. they've been busy with survey and trying to figure out treatment options. Oh yeah, yeah. Because what we had planned is now changed because of the budget change. So great. We're just trying to readjust. Oh yeah, yeah. Budgets will do that. Yep. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I love this hat. I got a lot of compliments on it. Oh, you've got so yours like, on. Oh, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you have it on. I should, uh, I should have mine on. I then this is probably over a year ago. We were at lunch near the office at a pizza place. I mean, this is obviously more than a year ago. This was pre-COVID, um, and we were sitting down. We were it was two people from the USDA and and uh, and two people from the state. And somebody walked by, and uh, he was from a car dealership or something or a car insurance. And he knew, like he, he saw the hat and knew right away what it was. And so the, the message is definitely getting out there. So, and that was, like I said, you know, pre-COVID. So great. Which was, which means pre-New York infestation. <laughs> yeah. We've got some slides on spider landerfly in our LISMA update to get people thinking about volunteering great. to take some grid squares. And nothing new down there in your area. Nothing in that, we're, that we're aware of yet. Um, okay. We're right now we're concentrating on the area, the kind of Westchester near the Westchester Airport. Not because we found it in New York, but because it was found on the Connecticut side. So we're right now we're kind of concentrating our efforts there. All right. If you want, when we do the roundtable announcements, you're welcome to give the latest on the lanternfly and anything else you think is interesting. All right, it's 10 o'clock. There's still people coming in, so we'll give them about five minutes and then we'll get started. All right, it looks like a lot of people are here, are here and they're uh, coming in slowly. So let's go ahead and start. Welcome everyone to the LISMA partners meeting and workshop. We have two great presentations today, both focused on invasive aquatic species. After the, the meeting starting at 11, we have, we'll start with the workshop. Haley, if you want to hit the slide. I'm Bill Jacobs, program manager. I'm joined by Abby Bisrutsik, our field project and outreach coordinator, and Haley Gladich, our invasive species specialist.
Haley's new. Haley joined Lisma as our new invasive species specialist just a few weeks ago. And Haley's a graduate, graduate of SUNY ESF, has some great field experience interning with Brookhaven National Lab doing forest health monitoring. Haley's worked in Florida on some native species. And Haley is a Long Island native. The whole team is Long Island natives, which we like. <laughs> Here's our agenda. We'll have a LISMA update. Then following the LISMA update, we can have roundtable announcements. I'll go around the room with using the chat box and call out names. And feel free to give us any kind of an update on invasive species activities. Then we'll take a break and go into the workshop. Invasive Species Awareness Week is coming up June 6th through 12th. We have some good webinars being planned. There are some nice, uh, great events like uh, water chestnut poles being led by DEC. So contact us if you want more information about any of those events. There is a calendar online and we'll send around a link to that through uh, email probably, or we'll put it in the chat at some point. And what we'd like to do, if you have an event planned for NYSAW, to please let us know anything during that week or the week after or the week before, June 6th through 12th, and we can put it on the calendar. So just email us and we'll put it up there. Abby helped to develop a promo video for NYSA, and this is it. Hopefully the audio works, should hit it. I'm not hearing the audio. Species Awareness Week, New York. Take, sorry, there we Make go. a difference in your community by taking part in New York's annual Invasive Species Awareness Week, New York I Saw, from June 6th through the 12th. Invasive species can harm the environment, the economy, and human health. Aquatic plants can take over our waterways, impeding recreation. Invasive insects, like spotted lanternfly, threaten grapes, apples, and other agricultural crops, along with our forests. And not just plants, like giant hogweed, have sap that can burn our skin. Learn how you can take action against invasive species during ISAW. Join virtual engagements to hear from invasive species experts and learn simple steps you can take to stop the spread of invasives, like cleaning your gear before hitting the trails or boating, or by simply burning local firewood when you camp, and by reporting invasive species observations right from your phone with the NY IMAP Invasives mobile app. See a list of all the virtual and COVID compliant events you can participate in at nysaw.org. We hope to see you there. Ooh. Nice job with that video. Make a difference in your community. Yeah, I think it, it was fun to make and it came out great. This will be publicly available on June 1st. We'll be sharing it um, over Facebook and I think it'll also be on YouTube, maybe on the uh, I'm not sure what channel yet, but when you see it, please share it. And um, yeah, thanks. Some of our field plans for this season on land. We have delineation surveys for emerging invasive species. These are tier two species on the tier ranking list. We did a bunch of surveys last year. So we're pretty much caught up. There's a, there are seven species left to survey for this year so far. Seven species on Long Island and there's two in New York City that we'd like to try to hit. We also have a big survey this year for spotted lanternfly and we'll talk more about that, but we'll need volunteers and agencies to help with that one. More on that coming up. Arthraxon hispidus, where 
surveying Arthraxon. We know that it occurs in two sites on Long Island. One is at Montauk County Park, where it threatens about a dozen rare threatened and endangered species. And there's also a population that's been observed next to Gabreski Airport. So we want to get out to the Gabreski Airport one and, and survey that as well. That's Arthraxon. It's an annual grass that uh, grows very dense, especially in wet areas. It grows in a way similar to Japanese stilt grass, somewhat. Once we survey the species, we notify landowners and coordinate management as needed. We use both IMAP invasives and iNaturalist to, to uh, monitor and keep track of the emerging species. And in a moment, Abby's going to show you a little bit more about how we do that, just, just briefly. We're also assisting with management plans. We're working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for an, an invasive species management plan for Sayville Grassland, also known as the Sayville National Wildlife Refuge. But Sayville Grassland is a project that conservationists here have been working on for 20 plus years. And uh, Quag Wildlife Refuge too. We're also assisting them with a management plan. And they're located very close to the Arthraxon infestation. So we want to go back there and see if they might have Arthraxon at the Quag Wildlife Refuge. And then as we always do, surveying priority conservation areas. This includes the ISPZs, We've grouped some ISPCs into management complexes. And now we also survey uh, natural heritage sites. We always have, but we put more of an emphasis on natural heritage sites that maybe don't fit into an ISPZ. We're interested in viburnums this year. There were some viburnums that we've seen around in the wild that are not native. We've had some somewhat of a hard time identifying them. They seem like hybrids or something. So we want to get back out there while they're like very soon while they're flowering and uh, creating uh, developing berries and whatnot. Maybe that will help with the ID that we couldn't do in the fall. And then there's southern pine beetle, of course, and spotted lanternfly might be. Oh, we've got spotted lanternfly. So that's it. Yeah, southern pine beetle too in the priority conservation areas. All right, next slide. In the aquatic side of things, we've worked with Long Island Metro Aquatic Invasive Species Task Force, as we've mentioned before, and we've prioritized the list of more than 700 water bodies on Long Island. And often rising to the top of the list are our coastal plain ponds, which is good to see. That's where they should be. We have plans to survey at up to eight different sites that have coast, most of them, not all of them, but most of them have coastal plain ponds within the site, such as Long Pond Greenbelt, Calverton Ponds, Sears Bellows County Park. So we'll be going in there, doing some rake tosses using SAS Pro, Simple Aquatic Survey, which Mitchell is going to teach you about in a few minutes. Working on permits to hand pull rock sea lavender, which is in a tidal wetland at Three Mile Harbor. We want to try to get in there and hand pull it. We'll need our permits, or at least for this year, if we can't pull it yet, try to cut the seed heads. Watercress is a species we're interested in. I know State Parks follows it at Connectquat. We're interested in finding out more about watercress in the Carmen's River. And then finally, uh, I saw there's some water chestnut poles during I saw with the EC. Volunteers are encouraged to help out with that. There's at least three poles during the week, water chestnut poles. So if anyone wants to help, get in touch with us or Ashley Morris at DEC. In other news, you'll recall that we issued an RFP a couple of months ago, calling for subcontracts for invasive species projects. We received 11 applications. They've been reviewed. We're che double checking the budget 
before we make any commitments. And so announcements will be made soon. These projects will start on or about July 1st. And the funding is provided through DEC. Our 2020 annual report will be online soon so everyone can see what went on in 2020. We've reopened the window to submit questionnaires. We were missing some important partners. If you haven't submitted a questionnaire on what you work you've done on invasive species in 2020, we'll resend a link. We might just send the link out to everybody in constant contact. So keep an eye in your mailbox for questionnaire link. Probably only takes like 15 minutes to fill it out. Just the highlights of what you've done in 2020 related to invasive species would be very helpful. And then we'll put that in the report and get it done. We're planning a LISMA e-newsletter to go out either every month or every two months. And that's in addition to the LIMPI, the Long Island Native Plant Initiative, and LISMA joint bigger newsletter that goes out quarterly. So there's a quarterly newsletter but we wanted to get something just for Elisma, short, sweet email newsletter that can go out more frequently, keep everyone updated. We're doing more on social media, including TikTok, and we have some, we'll show you what we're doing on TikTok coming up in a few minutes. And the tier ranking list, there's a new tier ranking list that are updated. It's been worked on and tweaked over the last, almost two years or a year and a half or so. So, but now it's ready in a new form, a new format. It's uh, interactive on a website. So there is a new tier ranking list, which we'll show you how to get to that in a moment. That's uh, worked on or developed by invasive, I'm sorry, IMAP Invasives team and New York Natural Heritage Program. And we'll show you that. There'll, there will also be a, like a doc, a PDF doc version on our website. Abby's going to tell us a little bit about how we monitor and map emerging invasive species on Long Island. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So apart from those priority terrestrial and aquatic areas that Bill was talking about, we also have these priority species. Um, these emerging invaders that we're watching that have, a, we know they have a high impact, but so far a low enough distribution that it's feasible to eradicate them. Um, but in order to understand where they are, we, we rely a lot on this um, community science observations. So when somebody observes an invasive species and uploads it to a database, whether it's IMAP invasives or iNaturalist, we can take and filter that information from the databases and put it into one map um, that helps us track these new invaders, informs our surveys that we do every year, um, and it promotes coordination with partners like you for rapid response. And this is a methodology that um, we made up to help us track these and be able to respond better. Oh, Haley, can you, next slide. So this, um, those blue dots that you see are where um, there have been observations either from IMAP or iNaturalist of emerging invasive species across Long Island. And the colorful uh, circles that you might see around them are um, what information that we put in when we survey it when I'm using survey one, two, three. So when we check that observation, we can make our own notes and um, see the status of how we've uh, coordinated with people to be able to address those emerging invasive species. It's a way to make everything more streamlined. And if you can click Haley. So doing this in ArcGIS Online, they have some cool tools to be able to um, see kind of like an infographic of all the data that you have there. So there's one example of some charts that it gives you and just cool um, new tools that we're taking advantage of to be able to make our work more efficient. Bill, you could take this. <laughs> All right, I was over in the chat. Thank you, Abby. This is what the new tier list format looks like. If you go to the website, you can go by prism. You can uh, filter by which prism it is. You can filter by species. You can filter by tier. If you only want to see tier two species throughout the state, 
you can see that quickly, just checking a box. If you want to say see tier two species just for Lisma, you can do that also. So there is a site for that, and we'll put the link in the chat box. As Bill mentioned, also coming soon are the annual report. So there's a little preview of what it's uh, some of it's going to look like. Um, also a monthly e-newsletter or uh, every other month for the brief updates on our projects, species to watch, and other helpful resources that we can include. Um, and yeah, lastly, the subcontracts are reviewed in rank, but we'll, announcements will be coming soon. I want to introduce our new TikTok site, which is really taking off. It's on fire. Haley's going to tell us more about TikTok and show us some of the videos and the amazing results that Haley's yeah. gotten so far. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. So yeah, so one of the items on our action plan um, was to create a series of short educational videos. And we figured with the rise of TikTok and Instagram Reels, we'd hop on that bandwagon. Um, not only because it makes like video editing quite easy to do, but um, with their really powerful algorithms, it helps to create a really wide reach. So we've gotten some really awesome feedback, not only from people within Long Island and New York State, but far beyond the shores of Long Island to the Midwest and the East Coast, people getting really excited about invasive species removal and spotting and um, native plants. So I, uh, in less than two weeks, we've amassed a following of uh, 1,400 followers and our top video has 48,000 views, which is pretty exciting. And we'll play it now. If it loads. So this is our, what our TikTok page looks like. I would, didn't use TikTok at all prior to getting here. So it's definitely been a learning curve, but it's been a fun learning curve to say the least. So. Go ahead and get it started. Um, Common invasives I see in my neighborhood. These are pachysandras and I see them planted in so many yards. And I get it, they're shade tolerant and grow fast, but for those same reasons, they're really invasive in our forest since it doesn't know where your yard ends and the forest begins. I think foam flower would be the perfect native replacement since it's also a semi-evergreen perennial with really similar leaf and flower structures. It also spreads stoloniferously, so it makes a really great ground cover that is also really shade tolerant. It's relatively deer resistant and our native bees will thank you. Today looks like the perfect day to recommend some native yeah. alternatives. So something that's really fun on here too, you can see the analytics, so we, the one thing that was really wild to us that people have spent over like 296 hours watching this video um, and it got onto the TikTok for you page. So that's where I think it got a lot of its following. But, um, but yeah, more to come. <laughs> um, we got some great ideas in mind too, I think. It's the first time in the history of Lisma that 48,000 people have looked at anything. <laughs> over 20 years if you even total it all it still doesn't reach 48,000 people and Haley did it in a 30 second video so thank you for that Haley yeah Haley's, yeah, really, avail Haley's really available excited. for hire by the way <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pretty steep price because she's she's getting popular out there yeah we're really excited about the videos Haley um, we, one of the last things we want to talk about was um, this spotted lanternfly grid program again. Um, this is a really important year for detecting spotted lanternfly and we need as many eyes out there as possible. So this is an easy way to get involved and also share with other people that you work with or other volunteers to um, be surveying for spotted lanternfly. Um, and that's a view of the map, but Haley, you can go to the next slide. So there's all those grid cells across Long Island, across the state. Um, and by claiming one of these grid cells, by going to the website, you then pick three points within the cell and survey for spotted lanternfly at those points um, every few months. And this is just a more systematic way to be having eyes out there and making a, a commitment to one area. The red squares that you'll see are um, especially priority areas. So um, Haley, you can go to the website and we can just do a little tour. Uh, 
Oh, link doesn't work. <laughs> it's in an upcoming slide though. So we'll- oh, Okay. We'll yeah, you can go to the, the, back. the back slide, the one before this, that, that one has a link. Yeah. There we go. So this is the IMAP website. I uh, just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. Um, there's a more, much more detailed information about this. There's also a webinar coming up to discuss this on June 7th. So you can be there for that. There will be a lot of good details. And then to get to the tool itself, um, again, one from many more directions. Yet another application of ArcGIS web apps and stuff. There's so many things you can do with them. So as the map is coming up, this is available for professional resource managers as well as volunteers. Citizen scientists can participate in this. And some of, many of us may have sites, publicly accessible sites that are included in these grid squares. And you can adopt your own site or adopt a site nearby. Lots of different ways to do it. And more, uh, there, there's, uh, there'll be more training on it coming up. Haley will, I mean, Abby will mention. But the yeah. short story is, is you go online and adopt a grid square where you want to survey. Yeah, so like what Legend says, there's those orange focus areas that um, they, they've been specifically tagged that they need um, some eyes on, but the other blue and uh, purple or pink squares are also good ones to pick. The, the pink ones have confirmed Tree of Heaven, um, and the blue ones are just other ones that are publicly accessible land. Um, again, don't go on anybody's, go to anybody's backyard for this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so pretty easy to claim one. I'm pretty sure you just click on a square and then there's a claim your grid square. And the LISMA staff will be claiming some squares in our priority conservation areas. But even so, we can't do all of it. So hopefully others will pitch in. There's a question if it needs any equipment. I I think the answer is no to that. If anybody else wants to chime in, I'm pretty sure you would just log observations in IMAP invasives. Yeah. Just IMAP invasives, as far as I know. Yeah, that's it. And there's it's, some pretty great steps on the IMAP website, as well as in the webinar, I'm sure. There's a previously recorded webinar in the upcoming one. They'll give you some great steps of what to do when you get to your square and how to monitor. So relatively easy. Yeah. And areas without squares, I think it's still useful to um, keep a lookout. Um, yeah, I see no reason why you shouldn't check that out every once in a while. Um, I think there are more tree of heaven on Long Island than is represented by those squares. So if you have some by you and you want to check it out every so often, that would be great. And yes, yeah, so a link to the SLF grid square. Great reminder. And that's June 7th for spotter lantern and fly webinar. There'll be one at one o'clock and then it will be shown again at 7 p.m. Next slide. A couple of events. We're planning a joint LISMA and Long Island Native Plant Initiative Conference in the fall. Date, date to be determined likely sometime in October. So we'll cover invasive species and native species. So and this will be done uh, virtually, webinar. Let us know if you have ideas for topics for a conference or if you would like to present at the conference. It, it will likely be two days, over two days. We'll see how it goes. And maybe if possible, a Saturday field trip. That's what we're thinking now. So if you're interested in participating, please email us or get in touch with us. And the other things I think we covered, the SAS Pro training on June 1st, water chestnut poles during ISAW. Yeah, we got the rest. All right, thank you.